Ukraine needs to strengthen its front line in the east. The Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region has put some pressure on the Russian President Vladimir Putin, stated UK Defense Secretary John Healy. Ukrainians need to strengthen their front line in the east and they will look to hold the territory in Kursk. The longer they hold Kursk, the weaker Putin becomes. The longer they hold Kursk, the better defended Ukraine will be, he said. Healy believes that the defense of Ukraine is the starting point for the defense of the United Kingdom. Moreover, he thinks that if Putin wins in Ukraine, he will not stop there. If Ukraine is not free, the world is not safe, he said. Ukraine launched its surprise invasion of Russia's Kursk region in early August. It continues to occupy hundreds of square kilometers of the region's territory. The Ukrainian incursion into the Kursk region has prompted Russia to move soldiers from all over the country to contain the Ukrainian advance. Ukraine's incursion into Kursk was likely driven by a need to demonstrate its ability to strike deep into Russian territory, possibly aiming to disrupt Russian operations and force Moscow to divert resources from other key sectors of the front. By attacking Kursk, Ukrainian forces may have hoped to shake Russian confidence and generate uncertainty in the Kremlin about its ability to defend its borders. On the military strategic front, Russia is exchanging men and materials for time, which it thinks is on its side. With continuous low-scale assaults, the Russian armed forces try to degrade Ukraine's military capabilities and prevent it from constituting new operational forces. Russia tries to deny Ukrainian efforts to gain initiative or advantage on the battlefield by using the minimum resources necessary. A certain level of casualties and damages to, for example, energy infrastructure and even loss of Russian land is acceptable to the Kremlin if that makes Ukrainian efforts seem ineffective and pointless, at least in the eyes of Ukraine's allies and, less importantly, Russian citizens. Amid the continued fighting and a new wave of Russian bombardment that has killed dozens over the past week, Ukraine has stepped up pressure on the US and its allies to provide it with more air defenses and allow it to use Western-supplied long-range weapons on military targets inside Russia. Opinion polls in Ukraine show that support for talks with Russia has grown since the failed counter-offensive last year, though most Ukrainians still say they want to continue fighting to retake all Russian-occupied lands. However, as the Wall Street Journal reports, one key constituency remains negative about any deal with Russia, the military. According to one recent poll, only 18% of veterans and active duty service members believe Ukraine should seek a negotiated end to the war, the lowest of any demographic group surveyed. 15% of soldiers and veterans say they would join an armed protest if Kyiv signed a peace deal they disagreed with. The publication writes, the commander of the 3rd Assault Brigade, Andrei Biletsky, noted that although war fatigue is building up in society, no military catastrophe has occurred. Ukraine can win back at least a very significant part of the territory, he said. I see a huge danger in ending the war at random. Many military officials were convinced that if a peace deal was struck, Putin would use the lull in fighting only to re-equip the Russian military and then invade again. Others said the sacrifices of their fallen comrades would have been in vain if Ukraine had simply agreed to hand over territory to Russia. Ivan Panchenko, a 42-year-old veteran, said he would oppose any plan that would involve surrendering Ukrainian territory. Russia has violated dozens of international treaties over the last 30 years. An agreement with them is worthless, he said. If we want peace that will last, we need to hurt them as much as possible. At the same time, although polls show the general public remains skeptical about deals with Putin, many, especially young people, are willing to accept even unwinnable peace terms to stop the war. Anna Pranina from Zaporozhi says she began to reconsider the possibility of negotiations after last year's counter-offensive. Now that her husband is fighting, she is ready to give up all the territory that Russia now occupies in exchange for peace. At the same time as Vladimir Dubovik, director of the Center for International Studies, notes a change in public opinion will give President Vladimir Zelensky the opportunity to conclude some kind of deal. The fact that people seem more willing to negotiate with Russia is a big chance, Dubovik said, but he added that any ceasefire would carry significant political risk. Many Ukrainians would probably see it as a bad deal. Many soldiers fighting in the East say a barrier has formed between those fighting and residents of the country's major cities who are oblivious to the war.
The government has created conditions where those who are truly motivated will not agree to agreements that give up territory. But those who are not fighting will make decisions. It is painful, says one of the soldiers.